This is the helpful art teacher demonstrating watercolor brush painting techniques. Today I'm going to be demonstrating various watercolor techniques. First we're going to start with a graded wash. What you're going to do is you're going to just paint plain water in the area you want to have a graded wash. Just paint it from left to right. The uh, graded wash is very very good for things like skies where you want it to be darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your square shader brush you're going to load it with color uh, mix the color with water so it's wet but a dark color and you're just going to brush it across the top and what will happen if you lift your paper is the paint's going to flow down wherever you put the water and it's going to get gradually lighter as it goes down so what you're essentially creating is a gradient um, if you go underneath it underneath where you painted with water just paint a line of water right underneath it um, you're, you're going to increase the flow of the paint and it'll flow down just to wherever there's water it's not going to flow into your entire picture if you lay your paper flat it'll flow more gradually if you hold your paper upright as I have here you might get drips but those drips can be just spread out by your brush or you can leave them because they create interesting shapes next technique I'm going to demonstrate is called color on color just take a wash of color um, a wash is where you mix the paint with water ahead of time and paint it in an area so it's uh, transparent and then you're going to take a different color first you wash your brush make sure it's nice and clean and then you're going to take a completely different uh, color that you've mixed with water or even a color straight out of the tube that you've not mixed with color and you're going to just dab it on in areas you're not brushing it on, you're not blending it on what you're doing is you're putting it on top of the other color and letting it mix, letting the natural wetness of the first layer of paint um, spread out the second layer of paint. The important thing to realize about color on color is that you're not blending it you're letting the natural wetness of the first coat of paint do your blending for you. The next uh, technique I'm going to demonstrate is called dry brushing. Uh, basically, dry brushing is what it sounds like. You're going to use the paint very thick, not a lot of water. Do a couple of practice swipes on your palette, or in my case I'm just using a paper plate, um, just to make sure that the brush is actually dry and you want those dry scratchy lines because it creates a texture. Um, you start at the bottom, press down, and lift your brush a little towards the end to increase that texture. If your brush is too wet, wipe it on a paper towel or on your palette and load up your brush with a lot of paint. The next one we're doing is called a solid wash. What we're doing is we're actually putting water on the paper just in the area we want a solid wash. So I'm putting water to sort of control where the paint goes. Uh, water acts as a barrier. If you put it in a certain area and not in another area, it will the paint will only go to the edge of the water. This is particularly true if you're laying your uh, paper flat, but it's also true to a certain extent even if you're holding your paper up as I am now. As you can see, I took my color and mixed it with water and I'm painting that wash right over the wet area and it looks very very even. That's a solid wash. Getting back to my graded wash, I'm going to put more water down and then um, um, with my clean brush and then I'm going to add to my graded wash to make it darker. Always starting at the top, brushing across and letting the color flow down so it starts darkest and ends later. Um, so it's kind of the opposite of the even wash. And I'm using a wet on wet technique which means I'm putting water down. I'm spreading it nice and thin so I don't have a lot of drips. And then I'm putting the color at the top and letting it flow down. You can see there's my color. Um, I'm sort of working with the drips because I'm holding my paper upright and the drips are kind of flowing out and making a very nice graded wash. It's a very natural look. You can almost see the clouds in the sky. I'm adding a little 
bit more water, a little bit more paint, controlling how I want the color to go. The next technique I'm going to use is called lifting. Use a dry paper towel, you wrap it around your finger, and you're just going to touch the wet spots of the paper, and it will lift up the paint. Notice I'm not rubbing the paper, because that would rip it. I'm just tapping it. Lifting is a wonderful technique to use if you are creating clouds. The next technique I'd like to demonstrate is called wet on wet. First I'm mixing the color ahead of time and now I'm going to be washing my brush and with my clean brush I'm going to be painting a certain area just where I want it with water. So I'm using a horizontal brush stroke and I'm making sure that my water uh, goes on the paper wet but not so drippy that it's going to flow. And then I'm painting that wet area quickly while the paper is not dry yet. I'm painting it quickly with paint. It's then spreading only to the area that I painted with water. And that is the wet on wet technique. That means I've created a wash of color so the paint is wet and I'm painting that wet color, uh, that, that liquidy wash, on wet paper. And it's spreading very evenly exactly where I want it. And you can get a very soft line that way. Wet on wet is a marvelous technique uh, for creating backgrounds where things are hazy and faded off into the distance. Dry brushing, on the other hand, is a wonderful technique for doing things in the extreme foreground or foreground, things that are up close, so close that you could see the texture, the texture of the scratchiness of the grass or the texture of a leaf or the texture of an animal's fur. Here I'm using a fan brush to create a, a different sort of texture. And in general, dry brushing is a marvelous technique for the foreground or extreme foreground 
where you would see every detail of an object. Here I'm using the fan brush, and I'm using almost the identical brush stroke that I used for dry brushing, but I'm doing it on wet paper, and you can see that it's got a softer look because the paint's spreading slightly. And this is uh, an area of the paper that's a little bit farther away from the viewer, so unlike dry brushing, you wouldn't see every texture. And of course this is just a demo to show you an inventory of the various watercolor techniques that you can apply to your paintings. Um, to look at my actual paintings and to be able to pick out what techniques I use is a very good first step in order to learn how to apply these techniques yourself. As you can see here I used a lot of graded washes in this painting. In this painting I used a lot of dry brushing and you can also see some graded washes in the background. In this painting I use graded washes in the middle ground to create shadows and dry brushing in the extreme foreground to create texture. Creating line effects on dry paper and wash effects on wet paper and combining them can create some very beautiful effects in your artwork. The important thing is to experiment and see what works for you. Remember in art there are no wrong answers. So play with the watercolors and really learn to enjoy them. Don't forget to experiment and have fun.